I've had it all, chucked it all away, and I'm going to regain it all. Again and again and again. One minute he's a good guy, and the next minute you just don't want to be around him. I talk a lot and swear a lot. So that's what people like to hear. So that's what I do. Being a heavyweight champion of the world in sports wasn't good enough for me. He feels like he had to be controversial to, to get the public to know about him. He said some stuff, he'd done some silly stuff, and you know these things happen. Young people make mistakes. I had to be the controversial, the outspoken, charismatic, idiot of a champion. I'm just going to bring something new to the heavyweight division. Apart from me, there's no excitement. I am the excitement in boxing. I've experienced all the highs and all the lows, I've experienced being on top, I've experienced being behind. He's benefiting now more from that experience than not having it. I didn't care about nothing, I just wanted to die so bad. I give up on life. He went to that place, he's come out the other side, and it's, he's gone. He's just exceeded all limits from then to now. Road to redemption. Being a champion or being a world champion or being whatever, it didn't mean nothing to me at all. I only wanted to beat Vladimir Klitschko because nobody else could in so long. And I did. Ability-wise, I'm five times better than anyone in the world at the moment. Anybody, the Klitschko is anyone. They're big as me, but they're not as fast. They've got no movement. They're like wood, if you know what I mean, robotic, as it said. And um, if I could do the distance, the 12 threes, no problem, I'd be able to beat them now. <laughs> When I was 14, I was watching Vladimir as a world heavyweight champion on TV, thinking, I can beat that guy. I know I can beat that guy, and I will beat that guy. So when we was face to face and he said, he said a stupid comment like, oh, you want what I have, everything I have you want. I said, what do you have that I want? You have some money and some belts. Klitschko is what Klitschko is. He is a good champion. He's good for boxing, great role model, complete sir, in my opinion. That's all he is. Nothing more, nothing less. You can expect to see the new heavyweight champion. I only wanted to beat Klitschko, that was it. I wasn't interested in the next 25 men behind him. That was it. I only wanted to beat Vlad because he was the man for so long. And I know that 99.9% .9 of you all expect me to lose to the great Vladimir Steelhammer. And um, I know by looking at him, he's got a lot of doubts. He's very deep thought about this fight. He's very worried about it. And on Saturday night, the whole world are going to celebrate with me because Tyson Fury will have achieved his gold and become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Did you realise then that you were the man to topple Vlad? Vlad knew it as well. I knew it, my cousin Yui knew it, they all knew it. I'm interested in breaking your face in. That's what I'm interested in, yeah? You're boring. I want to rid you out of the heavyweight division. Tell me more how much you hate me. Tell me more. I don't hate you. You need to I get under I, my skin. I don't hate you. Make it personal. You have about as much charisma as my underpants. Zero. I told you he's entertaining. So here in Dusseldorf, it's Klitschko against Fury. Look at Fury taunting him. Night of frustration for Klitschko. He Using his reach beautifully and doubling up on that left hook. Fury's got it! Fury is the champion! I've never ever feeling like it before or after. Nothing can, go, nothing can compare to that because it was a dream come true. It was the ultimate win against a formidable 12 year reigning champion. He only moved a mountain and the greatest feeling of all when he proved all these people wrong. We have the new unified heavyweight champion of the world, Mr Tyson Fury. I got out of that flood fight, I never had a mark on me, and I was back in my hotel room, I've just been 12 rounds with a so-called super champion. Wow. I feel great, I could have done another 12. You don't like it, change the station. You don't like it, don't take photos. You don't like it, don't print it in your newspaper. Do I care? Not really. You said after beating Vlad, that was it. You know, you hadn't looked beyond that. At what point did you realise that was it? Was it in the ring? Was it when you woke up with the belt? No, I said to me dad beforehand, before the fight, week before, two weeks before, I said, if I win, I'll probably never box again, because at that time, the fire was doubting. Even before the Klitschko fight, I didn't want to box anymore. I just had enough. I'd like people to get to know the real Tyson Fury, behind all the bravado, behind all the tongue-in-cheek, behind the pe person trying to sell fights and sell tickets and create controversy and interest. I expected more than what 
what actually there is in life. I don't know, I always was expecting more. If I had 100 million in the bank, I'd expect it to feel different. If I bought a, a, a Ferrari or a, or a Bentley or whatever, it didn't mean anything. There was, no, there was no substance to it. Nothing was value, nothing. Even being lineal champion of the world and winning all them belts and beating a great man in an undefeated 11 years, it didn't have no meaning to it or value. I didn't value it. It wasn't an achievement for me. Seven billion people in the world, and I was a man who, who became world heavyweight champion at that time. But it didn't mean anything. It didn't mean as much as these slippers on my feet today. Nothing. I was depressed. I didn't want to live. I, wanted, I really wanted to die. I wanted a date with the deaf man. I didn't have nothing to live for, in my opinion. In my mind, nothing was worth living for and everything was pointless. What's the point? What's the point earning money? What's the point being rich? What's the point being successful? What's the point having a family? What's the point breathing air? Everything that there was a point in doing, I had a question for. He was our role model and he was in a worse way than what we thought he was because we didn't know what was going, what was going on. You know, if you asked him, he never got any sympathy from us. We would say, you're a fool, you're seeking attention, you're a clown. The achievements, the money, the fame, the family, nothing mattered. So when nothing matters, then I thought there's no point in living. I do want to die. And I prayed for death on a daily basis. I wake up in the morning thinking, why the did I wake up this morning? Why didn't I die in my sleep? And if I tell that to my wife and my family, then they just break down and, and what is going on in this man's mind? It wasn't an easy, easy two years. There wasn't a day went by that I didn't want to die. I tried to drink myself to death. That didn't work. Apparently I can take a lot of alcohol. Um, I, did, I, I did attempt to uh, crash into a bridge at one time and I pulled out last minute and that was it really. I didn't want to jump in front of a train or hang myself. But I just hoped that I'd um, maybe have a heart attack or die in my sleep or something. He nearly destroyed my marriage and um, my family life. You've got a man who's got three kids at that, point, at that time who wants to die on a daily basis, who ain't well. So, it's not a good place, is it, to be in? How do you feel about that now, the fact that you didn't give him any sympathy at the time? I wouldn't give him no sympathy now. You know, it's just the way we are. I had counselling, but I never had any antidepressants. I, I'm against taking pills and stuff to get better. I knew the moment I started taking pills to help me with her life, then it was over, it may as well have been dead. Did the counselling help? To be honest, not really. To go and talk to a man in the room one-on-one, -on -one, once a week or three times a week, however many times, and tell him my problems, that didn't help me neither. What helped me was having a routine and a purpose to live. After the Klitschko fight, I didn't say I had a purpose in life anymore, if that made sense. I also didn't want to box anymore because I'd achieved everything. What was the reason for me to keep boxing? I didn't want to box. I hated boxing at that time. So after that, I never had no purpose. I was, I've, all I've ever done in my life is, is box. So when it comes that the boxing's gone, it was like, well, what else is there? I tried clay pigeon shooting, off-roading. Um, I tried golf, but nothing really interested me at all. I never had no really passion for nothing. And then I wasn't training, and I trained all my life from being a, a teenager, like a young kid, uh, on a daily basis. And when you don't train, you feel depressed. If I don't train now for a week, I cannot wait to get in the gym and train. If I train, don't train for any longer than a week, I'm depressed completely. For me, the boxing side is just a, it is what it is, it's just a, um, a fight. But the most important thing for me is keeping in shape. If I stay in shape, then I'll be depressed free forever. I think there's a lot of people in the world suffering. And they need to know that help is out there and you can get better. Daily, he gets thousands of messages of people saying, you've inspired me, you've stopped me from doing this, you've stopped me from doing that. Tyson Fury! I'm an unofficial, official ambassador for mental health in sports. It's my biggest goal, I mean, that's my only calling card. You know, that's mainly the most of the reasons I'm back, is to show people who's living in darkness that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. He's probably saved thousands of people's lives that he doesn't even know about. He doesn't even know them. And the fact that he's open and talking about it now and 
and giving people that inspiration, that's a bigger win than anything. I've had two combat fights now, lost two stone, battled mental health problems, battled alcoholism, battled addiction to drugs. I battled everything that a man could battle in this life, and here I am. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm no one special. I was a fat pig at nearly 28 stone, drinking and taking drugs on a daily basis. Changed my life around, I suffered with depression, up to the point of suicide, anxiety attacks, everything. You couldn't get any lower than I was. And here I am living proof that anyone can do it because I'm back today telling the story and inspiring millions around the world. When I first laced on gloves, I was the um, future heavyweight champion of the world. Nobody could touch me or handle me, ever. From this day to that. His mother's gone in the hospital early for some pains, dropped off at the hospital. So anyway, I went back, this so always not due for about, what was it, uh, two, eight weeks? Something like eight to nine weeks. Gets a phone call from the doctors, some doctor rung me at three o'clock in the morning. Goes to the hospital, they say he's being born. I said, well, he ain't due. Well, they said, uh, complications have aroused, you know, which we can't do anything about, we just gotta hope for the best. He's been born anyway. He's in the special care unit, and I think he was, what, he was about a pound and a half in weight or something, weren't you? Well, I looked and I went, you know, I had him in my hand. Picked him up, put him in my hand there, look. And I'm looking at this doctor and he's looking at me. He said, miracles happen. I said, miracles do happen and they will happen. I said, he'll live. Growing up, he was always a quiet boy um, and a nice, placid person. I looked at him, I thought, he will make it, he's got to grow, because it's God's will, he's here now, so make the best of it. So anyway, he looked at me, he said, what are you going to call him? After the heavyweight champion of the world, I said, Mike Tyson. He started laughing at me, his name's Tyson. Forget the Michael, I said, his name's Tyson. So he started laughing at me, the doctor. He said, good luck to you, he said, and I hope things work out for you. Before the boxing, Tyson was a skinny little boy. Um, very quiet, shy, and as he got a little older, put weight on and he was always embarrassed. But when he, was, when he started boxing at about 14 years old, he, uh, he grew confidence around that, basically, because he was so good from word go. I believe in fate me, he's here to do a job. God's putting me here to do a job. Why would he live against all the odds? Why would I call him Tyson? Because his name's Fury at the end of it. No boxer's been called that. It's the best boxing name ever, and let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? And uh, um, he's here, and he's a fighter. I was sparring British champions when I was like 15 years old and they couldn't handle me. Too hot to handle. <laughs> Loved every minute of it. I just wanted to get better and learn. I was like a sponge soaking everything up. I didn't want to be a big stiff European with my hands up around my face walking forward. I wanted to slip and slide and be a boxer like the American style. I wanted to have American style with European conditioning. And that's what I eventually got. <laughs> Yeah. I'm a no-nonsense heavyweight. I'm quite fast, I've got good movement. Heavyweight sensation. I've got power, Tyson. and I don't mess Fury. around. You can't learn it. You've either got it or you've not. Someone six foot nine shouldn't be able to move like I can. I defy every law of gravity. It's not fair. It really isn't fair that I move like I do. The reflexes, the, the, the slipping, the sliding, the awkwardness. The ability to box both ways. I'm a natural, gifted talent. All the talk of greatness, well, I'm big, I'm good, and I'm, I train hard, so there's nothing stopping me from going to the top. I do believe a million percent. I can no doubt be a world heavyweight champion. Mm. I didn't never want to box amateur. Amateur boxing to me was like a, something I had to do to turn professional. I was never interested in boxing for a plastic cup, ever. I always wanted to be a world heavyweight champion professional. Anything less was a failure in my eyes. They've got to beat me, haven't they? I'm the one to beat, really. I'm the one with a big knockout record. <laughs> Qualification for the 2008 Olympics. You and Pricey were seen as the two best. Um, I don't know. I was the number one junior at that time. I went to the World Juniors in, in Morocco. David Price was a senior, and there was a lot of other good... Um, Heavyweights as well. He got the nod to go to Beijing. Were you upset not to go? I was upset not to go, not never given a chance to go. That's what I was upset at. 
I was never given an opportunity to prove that I was good enough to go. They wouldn't give me a box off with David Price, not for a goal clock. No way. He'd been in the amateur programme for so long and it was his time. I didn't realise at the time, but I know everything happens for a reason now and I was very upset and I almost walked away from boxing. I almost never even turned professional. So I was bitter with the amateurs and I went into the professionals gladly. There's no consideration to stick around for London 2012? Oh, they wanted me to. The GB team wanted me to stick around, but I don't believe in waiting for things. I don't wait for nothing in my life, I take it while I can. I strike while the iron's hot. The best thing about being Tyson Fury, I don't know, just being me. Being yourself is quite good. The only one who's going to stop me from being successful as a boxer is me. Tyson Fury, we've created it now. It's just launched, it's just took off. No stop at me now. Aim for the stars, that's what I always did. I always only wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world. And ever since, from being 14 years old, I never ever for one day doubted myself. Whether I was sparring seasoned professionals or seasoned men who tried to kill me, I always knew I had something better than the next man. <laughs> used to study the old fighters. I've watched all them fights, all the heavyweight fights are the ones I'm interested in, and I've seen 90% of them growing up and over the years and watched them read times and times again. I once watched an interview with Mike Tyson, and he said when he was a kid he watched all these old-time uh, fighters, and it was all about winning belts and being a champion. But when you've done all that, what's it about then? I seen a thing on Mike Tyson recently and he said, these belts are worthless pieces of shit. They mean nothing. And he said, I sacrificed my life for this rubbish. For what? When you're not a world champion, when you're only good enough to be a British champion, you want to be a European champion. And if you are a European champion, you want to be a world champion. But when you're good enough and you've won all the world title belts, there's nothing else after that. I suppose then these fighters who want to go on and defend it plenty of times like Klitschko did and Joe Lewis and everybody else, but I never had a passion to do that, ever. Even before the Klitschko fight, I said to him, I'm not interested in going down as a role model or a hero or defending the belts. I remember speaking to Mick Hennessy when he signed you as a pro. He'd been blown away by you sparring Mike Perez, the Cuban. I went on two, two weeks piss-up to Tenerife and me, uh, Magaluf with the boys celebrating my um, 20th birthday. Well, I went on a mad, mad two weeks, like just drinking 24 hours a day. And then when I got back, I had a phone call from my Uncle Huey. He said, um, well, we're gonna go over and spar some big fat Cuban, some useless Cuban over an island to show McKenzie that you, you can fight. And I went over there and sparred with this fella on it. When I got there, he was like nine or 10 and no one beaten, like knocking everybody out and all that. And uh, I had no idea who he was, to be honest. He just looked like a mini Mike Tyson. Overweight, out of condition, fresh off the drink, and I, um, I sparred five rounds. We had a 50-50 spa. And then the next day, we, um, we had another spa, and he jumped out of the ring. He didn't want to continue. I made an arrogant man humble. Were they good days, early pro days? All good days, yeah. All great days. Great days on a career, a long career. It's about speed, movement, a bit of classy boxing. You've gone into training camp with Vlad many moons ago when he was being trained by the late great Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel tipped you and Deontay for greatness. Emmanuel Stewart was a great trainer, one of the best, in my opinion, in the world has ever seen or likely to see. And when I met him, he had high hopes for this young, fat, lazy pup. Because that's what I was, a puppy. In the heavyweight division, with only 12 fights and, and chubby and soft, and at the beginning of a long, hard road. But he saw something. He saw talent, he saw ability, he saw a future world heavyweight champion. And being around someone of that, that status and that accomplished in the game, and to hear those kind words pushed me on even more, made my belief even more than it was. 2011, you had your first fight with, with Del Boy, Derek Chisora. Probably your first proper, proper step up, do you agree? Chisora was supposed to fight Vladimir Klitschko be before me. And Klitschko pulled out on him twice. So he, he opted to fight me. I think Chisora was rated about number five or six in the world at that time. That was my first step up into the world stage here. Yeah. You learned stuff from the Chisora fights? Were you learning from these fights as you went along? Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, they were all 50-50 fights. Fighting fighters that were world ranked and only, only handfuls of fights. I was in a rush, I wanted to move quick. I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to do what Deontay Wilder did. Have 40 up like fights and fight nobodies and all that. Because it didn't really mean anything to me. It was either going to be the best or I wasn't. If I wasn't good enough, then beat me up. But if I am good enough, then I'm going to beat you up. You hit the deck against Nevin Padgett first time. What was that, a wake-up call? Or were you being lazy at a split second? That was a right hand on the chin. That's what that was. <laughs> um, it was a legitimate lockdown. I got knocked down and I got back up and stopped him. Has there ever been a doubt in your mind where you think, I'm not going to get up? No. Because if I open my eyes, then I know I can get up. And Cunningham, you were saying it is the best you thought. Listen, if you get hit on the chin and you don't, you get knocked out for the count, then you're gone, aren't you? But if I can get back up, I'm going to get back up. And I thought to me, I'm going to kill you stone dead now. You're getting it. You put me down, embarrass me in front of all these people. I'm going to hurt you badly. And that's what I did on both times. I got straight back up and put Padgett down three times. And I got straight back up and fired into Cunningham and, and ended up knocking him out. The only person to ever knock him out in a boxing fight. What made him good? And what made him hard for you as a guy coming up from cruiserweight? He was a slick boxer, um, very awkward, very good at his skills, and um, just knew what he was doing. He was a um, two-time IBF world champion, six foot three, 15 stone, awkward. And why do you give him more credit, or why did you say he was a harder opponent than Vlad? Because it was a much harder fight for me. I beat Vlad easy. That wasn't a hard fight, that was an easy fight. What's it going to take to stop you? Knock me out, simple. I always say it's very easy to beat Tyson Fury. Easy. Knock him out. The most pleasure I get out of my life, yeah, is taking my kids to school and picking them up. I think that's the best thing I have in my life at the moment. Better than any boxing career, better than watching anything or going anywhere or drinking or eating anything. The best thing I have in my life is my kids, barring nothing. Does having children change your mindset at all? 100%, and I'm glad you asked that question because nobody can really know the meaning of love until they have kids. Because your kids are a part of you. They came from you. They, they, your blood runs through their veins. Um, when you've got kids, it's not about you anymore. You're not that little kid anymore who wants to run around and whatever. It's about your kids. And it must seem strange me saying this because I was almost willing to abandon my kids and t taste death. So you can, you can imagine how low I was to not want to be with me kids who you think the world of. Do you want them to be fighting men and women? Yeah. No, definitely not. The expectations on them would be ridiculous. You'd never give people a chance to grow into their own person without judging them through the father's um, actions. Everything that my kids will have will have to work for themselves. I was given nothing in my life. My dad never gave me a penny. He said, there's a world with full of money out there. So if you want some money, you better go and earn it. Did you ever anticipate this level of fame for you? You know, when the, you got to the top? It, it, it's, it's a hard life. Your life ain't your own anymore. When I'm boxing, I'm Tyson Fury. Happy days. Million interviews, million pictures, whatever. But when I'm not, I'm a family man, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a brother. And that's, that's the way I want it. You know, a lot of people run away from fame. Andre the Giant went to the middle of nowhere so people won't bother him anymore. Because it's a horrible life. If I go to the pub and have a beer, oh, Tyson's back on the drink again. He must be taking drugs. This, that and the other, you know. It's an invasion of privacy of a normal life. And fame will take that away from you. People pull the out to me and say, can you sign them? I've had whatever, whatever you can think of, people have done to me. You know, I've had pints of beer chucked to me face because I'm not their hero. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. I've been booed, I've been cheered, I've been slapped, I've been punched. All for a job, my profession. You take all the glitz and glamour away from it. We're just bare bums in the shower like everybody else. Strip it all down naked and then soon you see the real person. Boxing's a lonely, hard road. 
No one can make you get up in the morning and go for a run if you don't want to. No one can make you fight on and dig deep and win fights. It's all about the individuals, the driving it in one. You can have the best team in the world, but if you don't want to do something, you can't do it, you won't do it. Doing a nice little run. I'm on the prom, taking it very slow. And I'm very heavy. Two years ago when Tyson put on loads of weight, 27, 28 stone, did you ever anticipate that he would get back to where he is now? I, uh, I did. I can't, uh, I can't say uh, I never had doubts because he, he was, he wasn't, he wasn't just fat. He never just put a load of weight on. He, he, he was down. Discipline is the most hardest thing in boxing. I love to eat cakes and biscuits and sweets. On to the treadmill, have a ten-minute walk. I knew sort of what sort of character he was and what he was going through at the time. And, uh, when he came over, I thought he's not interested in doing any boxing. I remember wrapping him up, he got gloved up and he got in the ring and I remember he just stood there, looked at me and laughed and uh, he was just so happy to, to start doing a bit of training. I thought, that was when I thought, maybe he does want to, uh, maybe he does want to come back and he's still got love for the sport. Two years it took me, two and a half years. I really didn't believe I'd ever box again. But now you're back on your terms rather than boxing's terms, is that right? Listen, I needed that break. From being 12 years old to 27, I never had a break. Training, 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 training camps, training camps, training camps. But I suppose you only re really realise if you love someone or something and when they're gone, you don't have it no more. When you take something you love out of your life because you think you don't love it no more and it goes, and you really think then, it's like, I did love that thing or that person and I want it back. It's amazing that he's come back from where he was. Um, it was a state. Horrible. Listen, I'm, I'm fat. He was fatter than what I am. He can work so hard in the gym to get it off for weeks and weeks and months and months, and then he can put it all back on in a day. Well, I can. I can put a stone on him one day quite easily. If I ate what I want, I'd be 50 stone. You know, you've got to crack on and realise that you did it to yourself. So there's no pity for an idiot. Just want to say I'm coming back better than I ever was before. You did a, an early run when you decided that you were going to get back into it. Yeah. You thought you were going to take on a couple of miles. Two minutes in and I started to walk. Because I could have carried on and completed two miles. But I don't want to do any injuries to myself. I knew it was going to be a slow process. So I started to walk, which is obviously beneficial for someone as heavy as nearly 28 stone. At first he came in the gym and I knew what his personality was like. I got to know him by this point and I, it, it, he sort of blew hot and cold. And I thought my main goal at the minute, at first, before getting him back into condition, was getting his love back for the sport. What's worth more, a bar of chocolate or the heavyweight championship of the world? What's going to get in front of me? Some Cadbury's cream eggs or being successful as a boxer? Were there times where he said to you, look, Ben, I don't, don't think I've, I can do it? Well, that was my job. That was my job to make sure that he didn't get to that point because, like I said, if I'd pushed him into a grave straight away, um, I don't think he would have been able to do it. I knew when to push him and when not to push him. I knew uh, the signs of when he was starting to fatigue. The diet itself was very tough for him. You know, we done a ketogenic diet, um, which is very tough. You can feel very low on energy at the start of it. And uh, with that on top of the training schedule that I gave him, it was very tough. I've not surprised myself because the running side of it and the fitness side of it was one thing, but when you're as experienced as me, you can always spar. I was sparring like the top lads in the country, in the world, at 26, 27 stone, and doing as many rounds as they wanted. My boxing ability's never been in question. I've never lost anything from my boxing ability. My movement, my feints, my IQ, nothing. All, all I did was pile a lot of weight on and take it off again, which I've done all my career. I lost six stone for the first Klitschko fight. <laughs> Training is a massive, massive thing to Tyson. Routine and structure and consistency. Training's all he's known for the biggest part of his life. So as long as he keeps living clean, training, and enjoying training, he can box for as long as he wants to box for. I ballooned up all my career. Basically the same as Ricky Atom. I don't really think it does much to you, ballooning up and down. Because people say to me, oh, if Ricky wouldn't have ballooned up and down, he'd have beat me over and Pacquiao. I don't believe so. I don't believe the weight had anything to do with it. It's the same with me. 
If I can't beat these top men, it's not because I put weight on and took it off. It's because I'm not good enough. I had to get the weight off. It wasn't healthy for me. Um, it was either get the weight off or die, basically. That's, that's, that was the ultimatum. Be dead or get the weight off. So I chose got the weight off. And there we are today, a year later, and um, the weight's off. It was mission impossible, to be honest with you, at first. Everybody thought he was finished. Um, a lot of people thought he was finished. And, um, you know, to be honest, sometimes I would sit on the sofa and look across and I, used to, I remember thinking to myself, I don't know if this job can be done. We both sort of took a risk on each other. I had to take a risk on whether he was going to commit to it or not and, and go through with it and go through that mammoth task and the hard, hard work that it's been. You know, I, I had to trust him that he was going to do that and he had to put his trust in me that I could give him um, the level of what he needed. Well, luckily with me in boxing, I, I, had a, I had another lease of life, another will to live, another will to, to strive and have goals again. And I've been truly blessed in my life, time and time again. And I don't look at this as a comeback, because I'm not coming back to what I once was. This is a new me, this is a new Tyson Fury, this is a new book. I ain't going back to rewrite an old story. That book's finished, it never, ever, ever was opened again. The legacy of Tyson Fury from a child to being heavyweight champion of the world and achieving his dreams, that book has been closed. This book is a new book, and I'm only on chapter three. And I feel, to be here sat here today, and to be in this position, I just feel blessed. I thought it was going to take more time to get him back into this place mentally and physically. Um, but it's a credit to himself to, to, to see where he's at now. Are you ready for a war? A mountain in my back, or this stand mountain. And uh, only one heavyweight had ever completed it before and all the, all the little whippets were always up and down it, and we've been up and down it with Billy Joe a few times. But Tyson had never done it, so I said, OK, I said, today we're going to walk up it. Just a nice, long, steady walk. Drove over to his damn mountain. He's got out of the car, and he's loosening himself off, thinking, whatever's he doing, running again for a walk, wallop, he's took off, started running. And uh, everybody was looking at each other like, what's he doing? He's not going to run up this mountain, seven, eight miles up a mountain. And uh, he was still about 25 stone, 26 stone. I was thinking, I was going to him, Tyson, listen, do not run up this mountain, just take your time. I said, we'll get it done before we go back. I said, but don't run up this mountain. Nope, I'm doing it. And kept going, kept going, and got to six miles. Anyway, there's the, the stop where everybody runs to. And we got there, I said, right, we're at the top now. Turned around, I was having a look at the view and turned back around, he's still going. Why well, I don't stop here if everybody else stops here. And he carried on going right to the top. He'd done about eight miles up the mountain. And uh, I knew then that, you know, his mental strength is on another level. I want to tear Deontay Wilder to pieces like a pit bull because he said I couldn't and the world thinks he can beat me. But I ain't never been beat in the ring. I ain't never lost a fight. I've been defying odds since I was born. The way I see my life is do me boxing career, whatever happens, happens. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. Either way, I'll know I've not left anything in the tank because if I would have stayed retired, then I always would have known I could have done more. I would have regretted it. Not because I didn't achieve everything I could have done, because there's nothing more I can achieve. But I know in my life that I would have had more to offer and I wasn't ready to retire, that's why I'm back. But this time, wherever it happens, I'll know I've given it everything and I know I have nothing more to offer. And that'll make me a very happy man. I can lay in bed at night thinking, you know what? I've done everything I wanted to do in my life and I've got no more to offer. Now I'm just going to enjoy myself. Listen, any time, any place, anywhere, I'll fight you in your back garden like a dumb Klitschko. I'll beat you, you bum. You're a bum. I chose this fight. Um, I, I had a contract of four or five fights um, to get back in, but that was made a decision in October of last year when I was 27 stone. And I didn't know I was going to fail after a fight or a few training camps. And I didn't need any more. I didn't need any more fights to prepare myself for the best. Bomb squad! <laughs> you ain't ready. So the 41st ready. person that's going to be knocked out, you're looking at the man right here. The only thing is, though, you're looking at problems, Palmer, you big dosser, is you ain't ready for me, and you never have been, you never will be. We was talking about four fights, um, and that, he said to me that was that was uh, what he was looking to get in his in his deal. Um, but there was offers flying everywhere, you know. And um, 
To be honest with you, Frank Warren come through with the best offer. Let's go! Come on! Let's go. You're gonna feel I'm a fury. You're not gonna feel no power. Come on! Come on! I'm gonna show you the come fight. Come on! Man. This fight was easily made in the end, wasn't it? Five minutes. Because you wanted it, or he wanted it, or just both? Just we both wanted to fight. We both wanted to fight, and fights are easy to make if both both parties want to do do a fight with each other. Is he going to feel pain that he never felt before? What's he going to do, follow me around the ring like this all day? Oh, he's going that way. When you go home, I want you to think about me every night. No, he's going this way, looking for one punch. And if he can't land it, he's totally f***ing him. They don't call me the Gypsy King for nothing. I didn't come to be embarrassed. Are they so skinny ones? New York City, I love you, baby! What do you think of Wildo as a person, firstly? As a person, I don't know him. I only know him through his professional career, which I've kept tabs on. I don't know his personal life. I don't know what he's like to go out for a beer with. They give each other a bit of stick and obviously the press tour was entertaining and, you know, people say about it being set up, it definitely wasn't set up, it's two fighting men. The problem is they're both unbeaten. They've both got unbelievable self-belief. Come on, bring it on! Any time of day, twice on a Sunday, you big dosser! I have no inkling on, on who he is as Deontay Wilder, the man behind the gloves, I don't know. But as, as a boxer, you have to admire him because he's become world champion and he's made a few defences off his belt and... He's unbeaten, so you've got to respect somebody like that. He knows that Deontay Wilder is a very, very good fighter, a very good champion. He's definitely got respect for Deontay Wilder, but we've got a job to do. Why do you think it's taken so long for him to resonate, either with the American public, but also with the boxing fans? Boxing is a long old process. It takes a long time to master your craft. Um, America's like a thousand times bigger than England, don't quote me on that, but it's a lot bigger. So in England, if you've had 10 fights, you're ready to fight for a British title or whatever, and you moved into fights quick, there's the public eyes on you, they've got someone who they think can fight, and then you move fast. You moved into massive fights straight away. In America, you can be boxing in Alabama somewhere, in a kitchen somewhere, and nobody will take any notice at all. So they build up these massive records, like 30-0, 40-0, 50-0, without fighting anybody. So Wilder was going silently under the radar in Alabama, he never left it really. Um, and in my opinion, he's had 40 fights, but I think he's really only had six pr proper fights. Good back foot, dude. even harder, lower with the shoulder. But, uh. That's why I think he's, he's only just starting to get known because he's only just had six fights, which would mean something. Because the rest of the guys who had two and 26, 17 and 54, 8 and 16. They're nobodies, they're just record builders. I could get to 150 and 0 by fighting men like that. It doesn't mean anything. And it's what are you boxing for? I think he's the most dangerous fighter in world boxing. Um, he's a freak of nature, similar to Tyson, but they've both got different attributes, um, being freak of natures. He's six foot seven. Weighs about 15 and a half stone, he's lightning quick, punches like a horse kicking, um, he's got a long reach. Um, you know, he's a very, very dangerous man. Unbeaten in 40 fights, WBC champion, the biggest puncher in heavyweight history. He, even though they knocked out bums all the way to 30 odd fights, every man takes knocking over. Every man bears a chin, and every man who's been knocked out has been separated from his senses. A chin's a chin. No matter if it's big, small, or fat or thin, he's still knocking out a chin. I think he's the biggest puncher in heavyweight history. Mike Tyson didn't even knock out as many opponents as uh, Deontay Wilder. And he had a few stiffs too, quite a few of them. Even if you look at all the Americans who's been fed dummies, most of them have, by the way. None of them, had as, none of them KO'd him as much as um, Wilder. I might be biased, but knowing where Tyson's come from, I believe that this will be the biggest win in history of boxing. This is what he's born to do. He's a showman, he's a talker, he's very intelligent, he's very witty, he's honest, you know, and he can communicate to all kinds of people, you know, and that's what the public want. Vlad was an awkward, um, awkward big fella. Tall, box, punch, good left hook, good right hand. 
but he was old. Vladimir was 38 years old when I beat him. At the end of his career. Here we go, baby. Wilder's only 33. Just basically just starting his championship career. So I think Wilder's a much, much bigger test than, um, than Klitschko. Klitschko was a very skilled fighter and he won't throw punches unless he thought they were going to land. Well, Wilder will throw punches even though he, he knows they're not going to land, he'll still throw them. And that's a dangerous man. He's a big, awkward man, isn't he, who can punch? Fuck you out, you daughter. Do you have any kind of fear about that punch? Not really, because if I get knocked out, good luck to me. Best thing for me. That's the way I look at a fight. If I win, OK, I've won a fight. If I lose, shouldn't have lost. It's just a fight to me. It's a bit more than just getting in the ring and fighting, isn't it? It's about what you do outside the ring as well. Tyson's a master at that, and I'm so proud of him. Ready? It's for all my German fans out there. Ein. I've been brought up hard and fast. I don't fear no man. I don't fear being knocked back out or even killed. I don't fear nothing. Via. If you win this fight, can you guarantee that you Zach. wouldn't fall off, having got I, to the top I, of the mountain? I can't guarantee nothing. I can't guarantee I'm going to wake up in the morning. God says we're not promised tomorrow, so live for today. So that's what I do. Sieben. Act. If I'm going to lose, I want knocking out properly. I want to lose proper. I don't want to lose by split decision. Oh my God, I got robbed. Nine. Ten. I want to get carried out on a stretcher if I'm going. Or else I'm going to try to put you on a stretcher anyway. We'll see in a wilder fight anyway. Because everybody thinks I'm going to jib and jab around the ring and, oh, wait till he catches me in around 11 with 30 seconds left and I'll, be, I'll pull my own hair and knock my own teeth out, punch myself in the face. Come on, champ. One champ, one face, one name. Let's go, champ. I want to rip Wilder's heart out and feed it to him. And if he knocks me out on the process, then good luck to him. But he better be prepared for a, for a hard fight. Because I, I think this is my calling card fight. This is my wake up and smell the competition fight. It makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up talking about it because nobody would ever know the deepness and the truth of this journey, you know. I just wanted to see this man back happy and enjoying life again and, and from the position that he was in to where he is now is, is unexplainable. I'm not the type of person to stay there for like 15, 20 years to get all my brains knocked out, that type of thing. I want to sort of like swoop in, stay there, defend a couple of times and get out of the business. You've been a hero, you've been a villain, you've been an anti-hero. What's Tyson Fury? Tyson Fury is, is, is nothing. Tyson Fury will be dust when he's dead and gone. But your legacy will live on because you follow, you're the lineal guy, really, your name it, is it, up it there It doesn't with really them. matter though. Legacies, smegacies, it doesn't mean. The comeback, being out all that thing going up in weight, the story behind it is a movie. Our journey back to the top is called Road to Redemption. What do you want to achieve, whether in boxing or through boxing? Do you know what I want to life? achieve? Happiness. I want to be happy and I want to stay healthy. Because when you lose your happiness, your health declines. And when your health declines, pff, game over. So when boxing's over, you're going to train still? Every day, flip. for the rest of my life. Pumping that iron. <laughs> I'm going to aim to be looking like The Rock, just a six foot nine version of him. I wouldn't be alive today if I didn't change my life. I definitely wouldn't have made it. You didn't see me, no, no one saw me, none of the cameras saw what was going on. But I saw what was going on. I was a mental, emotional wreck and I was on the way to having a heart attack and dying. I don't believe I would have been here today if I didn't come back training. This comeback, beating Wilder after the timeout and after the wait and everything else that goes with it, it's a fairy tale ending. I live on the edge, wear my heart on my sleeve and give everyone a straight straightness. Straight down the barrel. There is no hiding behind corners with me. I either like you or I don't. I'll tell you the truth. Do you like it on the edge? I love it. it keeps me keen and on edge, like a dog. Never know where my next meal's coming from. Have you already won?
coming back from what you've come from. Hundred percent. Being a fat, lazy bum with millions in the bank, there's no life at all. Being hungry and fit, and being a lion in the middle of a jungle, that's life. I don't fear being knocked Park out or even killed. I don't fear nothing. You ain't ready for me and you never will be. He's going through a pain that he never felt before. What's he going to do? Follow me around the ring like this all day. And if he can't land it, he's totally... When you go home, I want you to think about me every night. The world knows the name of Tyson Fury. And if they don't, they will do on December 1st. You can't eat me, big dog, sir. No, not Tyson. When I look over your body, I'm not going to have no mercy for you. I want this to be one of the greatest combats in boxing history. No man could have ever had a greater life than me. Tyson Fury! I've had it all, chucked it all away, and I'm going to regain it all again and again and again. One champion, one face. I can't wait to see your body shaking. Because you want to have a good sleep. <laughs> Mind games are mine.